in your backyard. Brought to you by DreamFinders Homes. Homes built to fit your lifestyle. Everyone knows about Springfield, the neighborhood just north of downtown Jacksonville. Established in 1869, it's the first of four federally designated historic districts in the city. After the Great Fire in 1901 left much of downtown in ruins, it became the most desirable place to live. 150 years later, that holds true for people like Christine Farley, when someone suggested she should consider Springfield from her former home in New York. So I came to Springfield and I fell in love the moment, even though there was barely one house restored on a block. There were all these old ladies in rags, you know, it reminded me of Dresden after the war. And yet there was such beauty and uh, I just got interested. I'm really interested in the people that dwelled in them as well. And so began her journey into the history of Springfield because... You know, it's nice to bring them back to life for a little while. She explains where the name originated and how the neighborhood launched some of everything in Jacksonville. Supposedly there was a, uh, a spring on 4th Street, a lovely spring, and it, um, th there was a donation, Hogan's donation, and that was part of this land. And we were the first uh, neighborhood, you know, formed in 1869. We were first for the trolley, first for a neighborhood bank. Been a lot of firsts here. You know what's interesting? When people um, think of Springfield, they think of it as originally the playground of the rich and famous. And to tell you the truth, before the fire, there were some big homes and wealthy people here. And you often hear that the fire didn't affect Springfield, but in fact it did. It affected Springfield tremendously because prior to that, there'd been big houses on big pieces of land. And because of the fire and all the buildings downtown being wiped out, they needed buildings quickly. So you found where there was a big house standing on a nice piece of land, all of a sudden there were two or three houses on the same piece of land next to it. So it caused a, a tremendous building boom. And although, it, uh, and the rear wealth, uh, there were the people that had the huge house, uh, houses, they left them because they wanted winding lanes in Riverside and, and San Marco. But we got a new group of people, you know, because of the fire, there were so many businesses that needed artisans, tinkers, tailors, you know, the railroad was growing like crazy. Springfield's winding lanes were overrun with new housing developments and becoming a dumping ground for cast-offs didn't help either. Anything they didn't want, you know, our lakes were filled with garbage and uh, human beings were, you know, the, the slum landlords moved in and what have we. And it, it seems like a dreadful period, but in fact it saved the houses. I feel that had they not wanted to pack people and garbage and everything into this small area. These, these houses would have been gone like the villa, and it's a real tragedy that we lost the villa. That la villa conversation is for another time. In the last decade or so, Springfield has undergone a renovation. Executive Director of SPAR, Kelly Rich, explains how they plan to commemorate 150 years. Well, this Esplanade Centennial is going to be a year-round celebration of our 150th anniversary of Springfield. So one of the things that SPAR took on is that we are implementing a temporary pocket park just for the year on Main Street. So uh, we are finishing up the construction. For the whole month of March, we're going to be having Music on Main, which is a free and open to the public music series uh, with live music, food trucks, uh, beer and wine available at Sesquan Centennial Park. Besides wanting to celebrate its rich history, Springfield residents want Jacksonville to know they will always be moving forward. Springfield has had such a wonderful growth and uh, excitement from the immediate area, but we're still fighting outward perceptions, especially uh, to the greater parts of Jacksonville. We decided to use this year as a really heavy marketing and promotional year to uh, hopefully intrigue and, and create some interest for people to come check out the new Springfield. Consider me intrigued and excited. I'm Rance Adam for River City Live. This evening, you can join everybody in the Springfield neighborhood at the Sesquicentennial Park to get a little taste of that Springfield history. It's located at 1521 North Main Street. Keep your eye out on a bunch of programs they have going on out there to celebrate the 150-year anniversary. And you can find out more at sparcouncil.org. I love the history segments that you do. Mm. Nice. You know, food is always great. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, the history love, geek in me. I love that she was the first to grab that house. You know, <laughs> it wasn't like everybody else was already renovating. That's really interesting. Thank you. Stick around.